Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I want to talk to you about the future of Call of Duty and kind of gaming in general. I'll say in the beginning that this video is speculative and opinionated. This is not any real fact or secret intel or me telling you what's coming. This is just what I'm guessing or predicting for the future of Call of Duty. Gameplay you're seeing right now is a little bit of Black Ops 3 using my good old KN44 playing Team Deathmatch. is a little rare for this channel and the game comes down to the wire. Incredibly close game. Got a big comeback at the end so I do hope you enjoy it. But I think think that the future of Call of Duty will be free to play. Free to play kind of like Planet Side, League of Legends, Dota, games like that. And by future, I'm not talking Sledgehammer Games 2 or whatever they're working on, Advanced Warfare 2 or their Vietnam game that they tried before that or Treyarch's next game or just any of these but far into the future two three maybe four years into the future maybe even five or six and I think that the catalyst here is going to be one major flop one failure of a COD game and then the rest of the series is going to be free to play and here are my reasons why number one is that the entire gaming industry is slowly moving toward access play and free to play instead of the sixty dollar or seventy or eighty dollar yearly purchases now by access play i would point to something kind of like uh... league uh, towards csgo where you pay fifteen dollars and then you get the game but then there's a ton of other things you can spend your money on or kind of like overwatch and i think lawbreakers is planning a similar model or completely free to play kind of like Dota and League and things like that, but every single game that comes out now, just about, even some of them like Evolve transitioned into a free-to-play game, which COD might do at some point many years from now, but every game has season passes. You get the season pass, you get the DLC all year, they have micro DLC things you can buy or random boxes to open, and each game has seasons, competitive seasons, themed seasons, Halloween season, Christmas season, uh, kind of like this, etc, etc. It goes on forever. You guys all played these games, and you know about it, and I think Call of Duty has been taking hints from that. You can see similar elements from League and CSGO and even stuff like World of Tanks and whatnot creeping into Call of Duty. And not just Call of Duty. Like, I'm talking about COD because primarily a COD channel. Battlefield's doing the same thing with their Insider and their versions of Season Pass and Battle Packs. And almost every major game is doing something like this. Even some single-player games are doing things like this. And these free games, these World of Tanks and Dota and whatnot, they eat into $60 game purchases. And sometimes they even monetized well or better and I think that the fact that they eat into the $60 purchases is what's really burning the industry up is that why would you buy say Mirror's Edge for $60 when you can download one of 10 free to play games that's almost as entertaining in doing that there are less $60 games sold there are less profits less sales and smaller profit margins on developing these big expensive blockbuster kind of games so it's kind of rough if you're in the major publishing industry speaking of development costs, development costs on video games have gone up tremendously over the last 10 years. And I mean, it's 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 a beyond exponential growth. Video games used to be able to develop for a hundred thousand, a million dollars, something like that. Now a major AAA video game has a budget equal to or bigger than a major Hollywood blockbuster movie and a marketing campaign even bigger. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars on major franchises like Assassin's Creed, Battlefield, Call of Duty. Uh, some of them do a little bit low cost like The Witcher and things like that, but even like Skyrim, Fallout, huge, expensive, expensive marketing budgets. And when you have budgets like that and free-to-play games are chewing into it, it's not good for corporate return on investment, which is one of the number one things that any corporate uh, type or any stock investor is going to look for, a simple ROI. And you don't want to forget that in the physical $60 game market, people still return their games to GameStop and Best Buy, they resell them on Craigslist, and they re-gift the physical games to others, and each one of these is a miss sales opportunity for the company. Free-to-play games don't have this problem. Free-to-play games you have to use your own account to log into and all of your gear is tied to that account and you can't really pirate it because they control all the servers. So free-to-play games puts all the control in the company's pockets even though it doesn't really feel like that because you're getting something for free. Speaking of which, emerging markets overseas do not buy video games traditionally and by emerging markets I'm talking about Russia whose economy up until recently was on the rebound. China is the biggest emerging market on the planet. It's already an emerged market. It's a huge market. But Chinese people, they don't have consoles typically because the government doesn't let you import them. And the culture over there is very heavy on piracy and not so much on buying games. They really love free-to-play games. Same thing in Korea. Uh, even India has a small emerging market. It's going to be much bigger in the future, I promise you. And I promise you they won't be buying $60 to $100 games. They're going to be going the free-to-play route. So in those countries, free-to-play is the only way to go. And this is the 
reason that COD Online exists at all. If you're familiar with COD Online, it's the free-to-play version of COD, which is only available in China, and I would absolutely love to post gameplay of that, but I don't have access to it, and it's all in Chinese, so I have no idea what I'm doing anyway. So if you want to play in the overseas markets, you need to do it in a free-to-play manner. On top of that, global free-to-play games like, and I'm going to say League of Legends here, have huge potential because people from 10, 15, 20 different big countries are all playing the same game. Like, the language might change a little bit, and the text and whatnot, and the character names, but the game is the same. I can easily load up Korean, Chinese, Japanese, or Spanish League of Legends and watch it just as much as I can anything else, because it's literally the same game that I play here at home. Same thing with Dota, and a lot of other eSport type games. They have crazy global potential. There's definite efficiencies here when you develop for one game for all markets and things like that. So awesome, awesome stuff there. And speaking of marketing and developing for one market, Call of Duty has the best marketing of any game ever of all time. Maybe not an individual game, you know, there's ups and downs, but for a series, Call of Duty marketing is on point. These marketing people need to get paid more, absolutely, because a large part of Call of Duty's success is that they continually build hype for every single game all year round and new stuff, new releases, new maps, new zombies, and it works. A lot of people, especially in the negative uh, side, the Call of Duty hate community, would say that they're tired of this, they're tired of being browbeaten and beat over the head by marketing and marketing and hype and hype and hype. But at the end of the day, the hype works. I've been playing Call of Duty for like eight years now and I still feel hyped when a new game comes out or new guns come out or new stuff. I, I do YouTube. Part of what I do is marketing and there's advertisements on my channel and stuff and I studied this in college so I know how all this works. But even still, it still gets to me and I still feel hyped for new Call of Duty stuff which is just a testament to the success of this marketing. And as awesome as that is and as tremendously successful as it is, it simply cannot last on a yearly basis forever. I'm kind of astonished that it's last as long as it has. They're setting records. They're blowing other companies out of the water here. But if you want to think about something that's going to be on a yearly basis that can fail, think about the new Star Wars tactic that Disney has. So Star Wars acquired, uh, Disney acquired Star Wars, and they have a plan to release a new Star Wars movie every Christmas from now until they are no longer profitable. This is public. You can look it up. We're not talking about episodes 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 27, but uh, they have it stacked where it's like episode, uh, side story, episode, side story. And the hype around Rogue One isn't really doing very well. They're already like adjusting their expectations. And it's really cool now to have Star Wars like every year, especially for big Star Wars fans, because it's a big thing. But I promise you 15 years from now, it's going to be like, oh, it's another Star Wars this Christmas. I don't really care about it. And eventually there will be a mega flop Star Wars. It will be a Star Wars that nobody gives one flying fudge sickle about and doesn't do very well. And Disney has to change their strategy. Same kind of thing with Call of Duty. I think that eventually at some point in the future, the hype train is going to derail. The $60 model won't quite work. And the there will be a mega flop Call of Duty. When that happens, they won't have quite the same return on investment or might even go negative. And I'm going to bet that whenever that hype train derails, the next thing Call of Duty does is rolls out a massive free-to-play backup plan in its place, and you'll see a Call of Duty that has seasons. You'll see a Call of Duty that's PC-friendly. You'll see Call of Duty that has like 300 guns that you have to spend real money on or coins to unlock and buy or that you can grind for. I expect to see something similar to Call of Duty online Online, but probably much better in quality, honestly, because Call of Duty Online is still running on an older engine, rolled out for free across North America and very PC friendly, because PC is really the place to go for free to play. You'll see it like free to play. I think uh, Smite did free to play on console and stuff like that, and they had free to play Warframe on console. You're going to see it exactly like that. So everybody can download Call of Duty and play it free to play, but it'll be microtransactions out the butt. You'll also see that it has seasons, not only esports seasons, like the, you know, the big competitive events like Dota and League. I mean, we have that now with Call of Duty, but when it's free to play, kind of everybody will be on board. I bet there'll be a single ranked mode. I bet you're going to see Call of Duty move in that direction in the future. And I think it would honestly help the game as an esport too, that everybody could play the same game on every system and maybe even cross compete. If you're going the Microsoft way, since they've opened up for cross competing on PC and console now with, or at least cross connecting with ReCore and Microsoft opened up 
their end so that they could play with PlayStation Network users, but Sony won't open theirs up. You could even do cross console, which would be fantastic. And that is just my prediction for the future. I could be wrong. And again, this ain't a Call of Duty hate video. This ain't a negativity video. This is something that five years from now, I think somebody's going to tweet at me and be like, bro, you were, you were seeing the future. You knew it was going to happen. Just something speculative, something a little bit of a fun video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.